pretty nifty. It's completely flush with all the interior walls down here. And it creates a nice little look for us. It looks it looks just fine. Give it a texture. Yeah. It's close enough. And now we got a really nice looking roof section. You can't tell that the point really got chopped off from the bottom here. It looks pretty much the exact same. Everything runs a lot smoother. You got a flat top, it's easier for those portaling. You're not gonna have optimization problems. You've got thickness to your roof. It looks good. It seals, which is the most important part, and everything is grid aligned. It's great. The only thing that you'll notice when you do this here is that right here on your the top portion of your roof pieces. Uh, which one is this? Like here. Your roof is your roof uh, joints are going to be a little bit out of whack with your tower wall joints, and that's completely natural. It's just um, it's a byproduct of having grid snapped. See here where we grid snapped to grid size one. Normally this would have been stuck right up here. That's, that's not to say that this isn't flush, it's just a, an artifact of grid snapping. That's all there is to it. And also, you can choose, you know, in a, in a previous step, that once you had all these root pieces dragged down to where you want it, you could have grid snapped these two, but I don't anticipate ever having to work with this root section again, so I think it'll be all right right there. Unless you plan on uh, resizing your roof, adding some windows, any such thing like that, then you might want to mess with it, but it's all right for now. So I guess the last thing that I'll show you today is uh, how to add a window to this tower. Real basic, and we're not going to use one of the uh, northwest or south walls. We're going to use an angled wall, because those are the difficult ones to work with, aren't they? So, is this an uh, angled wall? Yeah, we'll use this one right here. So the way I'm going to go about doing that is to once again use CHG subtract. And the, the only reason that this is difficult is because of this angle. We want a nice 90 degree angle out here, but I mean, how, how do we achieve that? If I use a clipper tool, I can kind of eye it and say, well, that looks about good. I mean, it's not, but to be pre precise about it, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, resize it down to about window size. Oop, I'm gonna clone it first. Let's say maybe a 94 high window. And then maybe we'll go ahead and shorten it. Oh, no, we don't want to do that. We'll just go ahead and uh, use our rotate tool. Again, rotate and scale, arbitrary transformation. And we are going to rotate this along the z-axis by 45 degrees exactly. No, not 45 degrees. 90 degrees exactly. Let's see what that does here. This gives us a nice cross intersection along our tower wall. And we'll go ahead and use CSG subtract. And now we can delete that piece. Now we've got a nice little tower hole here. And um, you can work with this in a variety of ways. Um, let's see. Use the edges tool. You'll be able to select this edge, drag it. Nope, that doesn't work. All right, I'm trying to make stuff up as I go here. I really don't know how to make those little arrow slits. What I usually do is just uh, use select face here and just drag it, and it'll go along like that. And you can use that to expand and contract. And additionally, if you want to make an actual window brush, it's going to stick right here in the middle of this gap. What I would do is I would just say, clone this, drag this out to cover it. No, 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 no. And we'll say we're going to select all of our other pieces. CSG subtract. That leaves us here with just the window piece. 
And then we can go ahead and resize and make it a little bit thinner. Now it's nice and 90 degrees, very flush, very sealed, and we can go ahead and give that a window texture. And we can get that through textures, dark mod, window, and we'll give it something completely random. Well, let's go something more fancy than that. Mm. Ornate. Yeah. Apply it to the whole brush. That yeah, looks like crap though. So we'll just go to our surface selection and uh, uh, surface tool. Hit the S key. Goes to our surface inspector. And for the entire brush, for all surfaces, because we don't care about the size of the brushes for this particular window, we hit fit. And look at that. It's a nice indented window into our tower at a nice 90 degree angle from the wall, even though we have absolutely no idea what the angle actually is, it's still completely possible to do that. We got a nice looking stained glass window up in here. You can do that all the way around, make them as big as you want, as small as you want. You can turn these into entities and make them swing open or slide open, do whatever you want. That's a, that's a subject for a different tutorial. Uh, today is just about brushwork. So that's about it. That's a, that's a sealed tower, cylindrical, as many sides as you want. We chose 12 today. You can make it 60 if you wanted to. You get a nice conical roof with it. It seals. It's got a nice little cap on the top of it. Looks pretty good. It's got thickness to it. We got a window. Beautiful. All right. So that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you learn a lot. Most importantly, be creative with these tools. I mean, this is really going to help you out. I mean, if, if you're new, is uh, like the <clears throat> the, mot the rotate rotate and scale arbitrary transformation. I can't believe that it doesn't come with its own default hotkey. You know, when you when you start up Dark Radiant for the first time, I mean, it's the most powerful tool there is, other than the Clipper tool. But hopefully, this will help you out. Make some cool stuff. Good luck, guys.